Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So, y'all are just going to be seeing some random gameplay that I have in the background here. While I talk about some things with the final shape, and I do believe this expansion is overhyped, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the raid, the future of this channel, my future with Destiny 2. I am recording this for another time. This is not the first recording that I have. It's the last time it was too loose and not concise enough. So I'm going to be concise here. I've let a couple of my thoughts process. I even put up a post on Reddit about like a couple of things and to gather other people's thoughts. And it did, it did, it did sway my decision, you know? Now, thumbnails are going to be a little bit misleading. Thumbnails are going to be a little bit misleading. So is the title. Just only slightly though, not that misleading. Big straight up here, I think people are way overhyping this expansion as far as being better than Forsaken, better than, like, up there with Forsaken, Kingsfall, and Witch Queen. Y'all should, if y'all have been on the channel for a while, y'all know that, in my opinion, Rise of Iron is the best expansion in Destiny's history. I was not there for the time of, but I did go back and play it when I picked back, when I picked up, when I bought Destiny 1. Now, for me, an expansion has to be able to stand on its two legs without considering that that year or any content surrounding it. Otherwise, Beyond Light would be by far the best expansion ever in Destiny's history. Because the year of Beyond Light was, in my opinion, one of the best years in Destiny. One of the best years. We got Beyond Light. Season of Hunt was okay. The Season of the Chosen, super good. Season of the Splicer, super good. Season of the Lost and the 30th Anniversary Pack, so good. But if we're looking at things from just strictly expansion, I do not think Forsaken was that good. Because dear God, the campaign was just, here, go kill Baron. 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 Go kill Baron. That's all the campaign was. And for me, as a newer player, because I started playing during Season of Rivals, playing through Forsaken, I didn't give a fuck about Cade. I did not care about Cade. And don't worry, we'll get to the final shape Cade in a minute. But I did not care when he died, because they just introduced me to him, but they just killed him. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I'm not... In order for me to care about a character, you have to give me time with that character. For example, in Stellar Blade... I'm going to resist saying this character's name, just in case I have not played the game, but in Stellar Blade, there's a character that is, that it is pretty bittersweet to fight them in the end. It is very bittersweet to fight them in the end. If you've played the game, you, it's one of the situations where you know, you know, if you don't, you don't. And also Bloodborne. Having to fight Garman as the final boss when he was there pretty much your entire journey, and you could talk to him and everything, he helped you out a little bit, you know. That was a super bittersweet moment, and Slave Night Gale as well. You have to be able to spend time with these characters before just killing them off. This was also why Rohan's death was, re was received with mute reception, and same with Amanda Holiday. <laughs> um, received with very mute reception. We did not have enough time to bond with these characters. And that was what it was like for me, and when I just saw Kay's death, I was like, oh, okay. Okay, let's move on, I don't care. Um, now, that being said, uh, my mistake was, I believe I played, no, I think I did play Red War first. I'm not quite, did I play Red War for second first? I don't remember. Either or, either way, the new supers are, were fine, I guess, you know, I can't speak to, I wasn't there when Forsaken happened. So, playing it after that time had passed, Forsaken, for me personally, is one of the mid expansions i know that's gonna get a lot of people angry oh but just just wait <laughs> and no of course i'm not saying beyond light is the best expansion i think as it as an expansion on its own i do think it's pretty mid i think it's definitely above forsaken uh campaign's a little bit more dynamic i both raids are good but i prefer deep zone a little bit more but more specifically, things like Lament, and I did enjoy the simulation activities that were on Europa. I did enjoy them a little bit. 
and we did get a couple new strikes and everything. I will say, I think Forsaken and Beyond Light are a little bit equal in terms of quality. Um, Taken King is really good. Really good. I think it's one of the better ones. Like, probably top three. I think Witch Queen is overhyped. Because Vow of the Disciple is a pretty good raid. Definitely not my favorite. Definitely not my favorite. I wouldn't necessarily say it's my top three either. My top three usually fluctuate. But um, my top two are definitely King's Fall and Deep Stone Crypt for entirely different reasons. King's Fall for the spectacle, Deep Stone for... It's my favorite raid to introduce new people to raiding in. It is my absolute favorite to do that in. I love teaching that raid. At least I used to. Don't worry, we'll get into the whole used to here in a second. But, Final Shape. <sighs> final Shape, how I feel about Final Shape, is heavily dependent on the changes Bungie made without telling anyone. Adding surges to raids and dungeons should never have happened. Never, ever, ever should have happened. Making raids and dungeons negative five below should have never, ever happened. I'm, okay, I'm relatively okay with that if the raid is on Pinnacle or whatever, right? I'm okay with that, but it makes it it makes it infinitely more difficult when they add searches and because that means I as a Sherpa for like Deep Stone Crypt for example I have taught every single raid um, I have taught except for Garden Garden I've only ran twice myself I have not taught that raid uh, nor neither would I be comfortable in teaching that raid but I have taught every single other raid including Rude of Nightmares despite how much I hate that raid now for me personally I, that means that I have to go to the extra step of telling people like how surges work, but also if they do not have a particular element type of that weapon, I, I, they just can't do good damage. They can't do good damage, which fucking sucks, especially if I'm running with like more than two new lights, like not new lights, but more than two newer players. And this is very common for Deep Stone Crypt in particular. Because, you know, Deep Stone Crypt is a more friendly player, you know, rain. I get that I get newer players a lot for Deep Stone, but also I get it in Deep Stone for Vault of Glass 2. When I used to run it, I used to teach that raid all the time. Now, besides surges, negative high power level in Bungie, raising bosses HP for no reason, making, like, well, this is more specifically the case for Last Wish, you can no longer one. You can no longer one face Riven. They also patch their cheese. I'm okay. I'm okay with patching the Riven cheese. I have never done Riven legitimately, but I'm okay with her them patching her cheese. I'm perfectly okay with that. They did say the bun the Bungie team knows about about everybody's distaste for the surges. They have said there's no chance to no plans to change it currently, but the team is looking into it. I would not be as upset about the negative five power if it wasn't for the surges. Because sometimes I do like to do runs where random exotic, you know, we, I spin the wheel for an exotic that I have to use. I have to extremely limit myself if there's a goddamn surge, though. I also can't use some, like, jokey joke things that I like testing out, like Legend of Acreus and Orcs. I can't fucking use it. If it's a different surge. I'm okay with surges being a part of GMs. Guiding players on GMs for to use like different loadouts or something like that, that's relatively fine. But I'm really, really starting to feel like we're getting really close to match game where Bungie is dictating what they want us to use. I want to use certain things. Because I do not like using meta. If y'all have been on the channel for a while, y'all know that I absolutely I do not use meta. Most of the time. There are some instances where I will use meta, but most of my builds are pretty off meta. Like, apparently, who the fuck is using Hellblast A14 with Bubble? Also, not very many people were using Pr Necrochasm before Prismatic. You know, not barely anybody uses a triple shotgun setup, especially in a raid. <laughs> but I like, you, I like using off meta things. I, I just didn't, that's one of my... Finding the hidden gems, I do enjoy doing, honestly. I really do. In Souls games, it's a little bit different, but most of the time, I like using underrated, under-hidden 
gems. But now Bungie is forcing me to in raids and dungeons to use specific loadouts. Or else I'll lose on almost two spec mods worth of damage. Oh, and by the way, adept weapons are completely useless. Adept, unless it's a fusion rifle, specifically because adept charge time does help. Like, boss spec, major spec, and minor spec were so useful. And a dead big one spec was so useful. That was the only reason why I wanted the depth weapons. They do not deal extra damage, so there is zero point in having an adept raid weapon. Or even a depth GM weapon. There is absolutely no point. Zero. And yes, you can have a plus 10 stat in any of them, but usually it's negligible at best. And yes, you can have like a depth targeting adjuster, but that's for PvP. I'm a PvE guy. So, and also, another change that really has impacted Final Shape, world, drop, weapons can get enhanced perks. Which means origin traits are more important. Because more than one weapon now can roll with the same roll. Which is a fucking problem. World drop weapons should, especially if there is an arc rocket launcher, that's just a world drop. That I now have one with cloud cartridge and explosive light, and I can enhance both of the perks. And it has impact casing too. What the fuck? What the fuck? A world drop can get enhanced perks. That should never be the case. World drops should be for players to have decent loot. Not absolutely like the best of the best, but decent loot overall. However, no, that's not the case anymore. Those are my biggest frustrations with generally Final Shape. Now going to the, to the Final Shape itself. As a standalone, you know, little dealio. Done, the campaign was fun. I don't know the campaign was fun. I will say, and I won't be going to the ending stuff until later. We're going to kind of go in a little bit of a chrono chronological order. It's a little bit strange being by yourself for the patrol areas, even though I played with other people. It is it is a little bit strange only learning it by yourself. That was something I thought to be a little bit strange and a little bit weird. But, you know, it, it was fine. I will say, I didn't really feel very much actual fear like i wasn't afraid of anything really necessarily except in the patrol space one of the patrol spaces it gets super dark and when it gets super dark you know that, then i started to be like oh it was a little spooky a little spooky i didn't really feel that anywhere else in the campaign prismatic is absolute dog shit on titan i was hoping it was going to be decent with the changes to consecration and diamond lance but holy shit is it awful Titans almost have, they have little to no form of survivability. The best we have is Knockout. And Knockout requires you to be in melee range. I found myself dying so much on Prismatic that I just said, fuck it. I swapped to Ark with using flashbang grenades. And I was able to do a lot better. I don't, I also, I don't, Titans would have been much better off just getting flashbang instead of pulse grenade, honestly. Um, because at least fast flashbang makes your enemies not attack so that you can get into melee range. But I was surviving a lot better on arc than I was on prismatic. That's how you know it's bad, is when you can survive on arc, on arc better than, pris than prismatic. <laughs> That's how you know it's bad, is you can survive on arc better. Also, thund and another issue, Thunder Crash needs his base damage ramped up and Kyrus needs to do something else. Because, man, it makes using... You can't. You basically cannot use Thunder Crash without Kyrus. You just can't. And it pretty it kind of does limit your build, honestly. If you plan on using Thunder Crash, which is what I wanted to use because Necrochasm deals Kinetic and Arc. So, in order to be benefit from being amplified and getting those Ionic Traces, I have to have Kyrus equipped. Uh, the other weapons that do deal more than one damage type in the kinetic slot, Ace of Spades. Hammer Assault is just not good without Sunspots. I just don't personally like it without the Sunspots. But you would need Solar as your super to benefit from, you know, Fire Sprites and everything. Void Breaches, if you're a Titan, you should not be using Void necessarily because of Void Breaches aren't particularly great. They regenerate your class ability, while Fire Sprites give you great energy. 
that's my biggest issue, especially with, with having no Bastion. It definitely would be good in higher-end stuff, possibly. Using Derringer's Lash and something else, you know. That, that could be pretty good, but Void Reaches are just are not particularly great. As, but you do have... Condition of Finality, which is Stasis and Outran Solar, so you could run a Stasis Super there. But, I don't know anyone that uses, that wants to use Glacier Titan. So, like, like the Glacier Super. Um, Glacier Quake, or whatever it's called. Now, with Prismatic on Titan being so bad, Campaign being pretty good, and Exotic Missions being pretty good, the Titan Exotic Armor pieces were surprisingly good. Um, definitely the new Titan Arms definitely fit very well into support roles. You get in your, you get your melee energy back pretty fast if you have multiple people around you. Really, you're basically a movable well, essentially. Not quite as strong, though. And the rocket chest piece does work with rocket sidearms, but it also works with, um, Grand Overture as well, and those rockets. Those Valia rockets, it works with those too. Which is very cool, very neat. I will say my only issue is the rocket startups can't really do precision damage necessarily, so that's my slight bit of an issue, but hey. You definitely work really well in that. And I saw somebody else, like a friend of mine, Psycho, was using it, and he was using it pretty good. So, however, the weapons. Kavastov, I don't like. Microcosm, I know it's good in terms of damage, but it's not doesn't really fit my playstyle necessarily. Wild Hunt or Steel Hunt, Still Hunt doesn't fit my play. I don't, I don't, I don't like it personally. It's great for especially for Golden Gun Hunters, but doesn't really fit. I don't, don't like it necessarily either. And for Red Death, why don't I just use a heal clip and get as a weapon? We have two in the game. There's a Sidearm, Heliocentric, which can get enhanced perks now, and Luna Sal. There is no po Red Death does exactly what a regular asset legendary does, but worse. <laughs> so there's no point in me using Red Death, especially when there's other better pulse rifles I can use in general, like No Time to Explain, Up and Perfected, and even in that energy slot, there's Graviton Lance, which is super good. Especially since it's a waste an exotic slot when I can just have Gallahorn to just clear a room really quickly. I don't really see the point of using Red Death. Now, talking about the biggest pile of dog shit. The raid. <laughs> We're gonna send them out with their people, but also, just a little bit of a side note, last positive. The, uh, the strike was pretty good. I don't really see how it's gonna be that difficult, but uh, it's going to be difficult because of the surges and the fucking negative high power, but... Yeah. But strike good. Even though we only got one strike again. Keep in mind, we've only gotten two strikes in the last two years. <laughs> we've only got two new strikes in the last two years. But the raid. So, my thoughts on the witness raid. Probably one of the worst three raids that we've ever gotten. Now... I know a lot of people in the comments would be so upset and everything, right? So upset. But, here we go for a second. The music was unimpressive. The Witness kind of looked like he could be from a Playmobil Lego set. <laughs> uh, the Witness was not threatening at all. And I even saw him in person in the campaign, in the final 12 May mission. And I was so disappointed. I was like, bruh. Tanix was more threatening than this. <laughs> like, Tanix was more imposing than you. <laughs> That's how you know you fucked up. Well, so someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought Bungie said the witness was going to have multiple forms. To me, that form that we saw didn't look that much different. <laughs> but, um... Back to the actual raid itself... The loot is ass. The loot is ass. And yes, I know it has a brand new weapon perk that a lot of people probably don't realize that will definitely get added into the pool at some point. 
it probably wouldn't even take as long as Reconstruction and Rewind Rounds did because they both came in at around the same time. And also the origin trait is ass. With so many weapons being able to be craftable with better origin traits. And I know somebody in the Reddit post have pointed out that Zowley's Bane is good because it has explode payload incandescent. And there is there was there is no hand cannon that have solar hand cannon that has that role. Um, but its origin trait is ass. I, I wanna bring up two weapons to that. Luna's Howl immediately dismantled Zali's Bane because it has heal clip. But, you know, let's spare that for a second. Um, how come everybody else is using Sunshot when it does not have heal clip? It doesn't even have an origin trait. Because it has a better reload and it's better at doing Zali's Bane than. And this is coming from someone that used to use Zali's a lot. Like, it's among my top five energy weapons. With most kills. So that my point is, Origin Trait does matter more than you think. That's why no one wanted Forbearance when it came out. When people that already had Forbearance, no one wanted it because the Origin Trait was so good for Valor the Disciple. Which is why no one wanted Succession. The Origin Trait is so good from Deep Soul Crypt, and we already had it. Origin Traits matter a lot. And that's why no one really uses the Vault of Glass weapons anymore, because they have no origin trait. And the raid weapons, origin trait is so bad. It's so bad, it's negligible. It's useless if you run solo, basically. Or if an encounter has you being separated from other people, it's useless as well. And I'm sorry, but a really good perk is not going to make me go out of my way to get the weapon. Especially when the armor set is as bad as it is. The armor set from Salvation's Edge is one of the worst armor sets in the game. I honestly might prefer Garden of Salvation's armor over Salvation's Edge. Because at least Garden's armor is unique. And not fucking asymm as asymmetrical as Salvation's Edge is. And not to mention, the difficulty of the encounters are not rewarding enough. Like, the loot is not good enough to me justifying running the raid more than just once. And I would only run the raid for the experience. And that's not even the worst issue. One of the more terrible issues is God Slayer. Time to humble all of you God Slayers out there, but you do have the second most common raid title. It is not impressive to have God Slayer. The only raid title that is more common than God Slayer is Descendant, which is from Deepstone Crypt. So sorry to humble you God Slayers out there that are so fucking high and mighty. Not saying that having God Slayer is not an achievement. It is. But do those people that think they're holier than them because you have God Slayer, you're not that special. You have the second most common raid title. The rarest raid title and the rarest title to this day is still Swordbearer, which is from Crota Zen. And the issue with LFG right now is everybody for Val Salvation's Edge, even though the raid just came out, is know what to do, God Slayers only. That is what pisses me off. I really despise gatekeeping people this hard from doing activities. I hated it with, like, when I heard about the original Gallahorn situation. I did not like the fact that people were doing that then, then I do not like it now with the God Slayer shit. People need to calm down about having God Slayer. It's not an impressive it's not as an impressive raid title as people think it is. And yes, its rate is so high because it's of its limited time, but a lot of people that do not raid a lot don't consider that the general you basically have eight weeks to get a raid title. After Master comes out, you have about eight weeks to get that raid title. But basically, after four weeks, a raid title has sort of set in stone its percentage rate of being gotten. Because you do have, especially people that do go after raid titles, you know. You have you are on a clock for getting that title. If you want a title, you are on the clock for getting a raid title. It's not as bad for dungeons, but with raids, you are on a time clock. 
to get that title. So people want to say Pantheon's Ray title, you know, so it's because it wasn't going to be around again. Well, people that normally go for Ray titles know that all Ray titles are a limited time thing. Because most Triumphs are really, are basically impossible to do after the raid has been out for a while. Because some of them you do need to dedicate a team for. Case in point, Featherlight for Crota's End. That one, when the raid was like bumping and a lot of people were grinding it out and everything, took me hours, days, several days to try of grinding out different teams and everything to get that Triumph done. Featherlight, to this day, in my opinion, is one of the hardest Ray Triumphs to ever have happen, to ever exist. The only one that I would, I don't contest is Flawless Garden. Holy shit, those of you know that had Flawless Garden done, yeah, damn. <laughs> um, I respect the hell out of that. And I haven't done Last Wishes one either, so I'm not too familiar with that. The hardest one that I've done personally, between Descendant... Disciple Slayer, King Slayer, and uh, the Crota Zen one, Sword Bearer, Featherlight is the hardest one that I've done. So, those are just a, f those are a few of the frustrating things for me personally. And I know some Sherpas are going to go out there and they are going to get that job done. They're going to bring up all other players up, but I just... It irks my nerves seeing know what to do after a raid's been out. I did not like that with Rune Nightmares either. I did not like it with Rune of Nightmares either. And why I hate running Rune of Nightmares is because most of the time I run into teams, especially now, where I put up an LFG with, you know, I'm either helping a couple people or, you know, whatever. Two people will just will just duo the entire raid. And I don't like that. I like taking part in the raid. So I refuse to run Rune of Nightmares now. And in case of the witness one, I think by the time people are going to be doing teaching runs, I think it's going to be a little too late. And the seasonal weapons are much, much better than the raid weapons because their origin trait is so good. Origin trait matters. Origin trait matters. A lot. Especially now that every single weapon can get enhanced perks. I can't say that enough. Origin trait matters a lot more now. And these new seasonal weapons look like they're going to be even better than the raid weapons. The raid weapons are going to be obsolete. Even with their fancy new perk. So that's a little bit of a rant. But on to my probably my last issue with Salvation's Edge. And this kind of culminates a bigger issue with Destiny 2 balancing. And that's Titans. In case y'all don't know, out of the top 10 teams, only 6, Team 6, 7, and 8 did the raid with a Titan on the team, at least for some portion of the raid. All of the, and by the time they beat, that by the time they reached the final boss, they swapped off a Titan. Most of the teams that cleared day one, well, contest mode, cleared it with hunters and warlocks, not titans. This speaks volumes as to how shitty of a state titan is in currently. Especially in terms of titans are extremely situational. And I'm, I refuse to do that raid on any other character other than titan. I refuse to run new raids on any other character other than my main first. So that I don't have to worry about my build as much because I know how to play the, char the character. Titans have zero way to do precision damage with just abilities. And super. We do not have a grenade that excels at precision damage. We do not have... Well, obviously, besides like fusion grenade or... But I don't, I'm pretty sure that doesn't work on the witness. We do not have a melee that does precision. We do not have a super that does it. Thunder Crash does not hit crit spots very well at all. Thunder Crash is one of the most goofiest supers currently. It used to be more reliable um, from what I remember, but now sometimes 
it'll go straight through bosses. Sometimes it won't even be able to hit them. Like, you'll kind of, like, it's like the boss has a force field around him, and the Super Bowl detonate, so you just have to aim at the ground. It is super inconsistent. And the axes are basically act like a Nova Bomb. They do not deal precision damage. And they sort of rely on the boss being bigger. Like, they would work well in a bigger boss, but if the boss is, like, either smaller or moves around a lot or something like that, the super is just not good. The Titans need a precision damage super, like a golden gun or a tether or a gathering storm or <laughs> or even um the strand roaming one does do precision damage rising enough that being said you can't really use it on the witness i don't think but then i mean even warlocks have chaos reach chaos reach has a tighter cone than basically any of the titan supers So, Titans need desperate help to be able to compete with if they're going to be doing raid bosses like The Witness in the future. This is this was also an issue with Oryx, in particular. The only reason why Titans can somewhat be used there is if you don't have a Warlock, a Titan can run Bubble. But also, Titans, you can Thunder Crash Oryx's Knuckles. You can Thunder Crash them. If you choose to do that, definitely have Legend of Agrius or even Fourth Horseman on. A like fourth horseman, a sniper, and a linear. That would honestly probably be your best bet, especially if you want to you know, do stuff for final stand without swapping weapons. The balancing in this game is really bad currently. It's awful. Certain things are way stronger than what they need to be. And Titans have yet to find a middle ground to where, like, to stand on. They're either way too strong at Bungie's eyes, or in everybody else's eyes, they're too weak. The grappling shit would not have even worked well against the Witness. And barely anybody can even do that tech. Myself included, I never really attempted it, to be fair, but, like, I don't see the point in doing tech like that. It requires an absurd amount of setup. And they nerfed those specific things. Titans need help. Desperately. Warlocks, well is destroyed. <laughs> I'm sorry, but well is destroyed. Y'all have been freed. Y'all have been freed from using well. Honestly, you should not be using well. <laughs> really, at all. But, my thoughts. Final Shape is, in my opinion, one of the worst three expansions. A raid, to me, makes or breaks an expansion, and for me, Salvation's Edge breaks Final Shape. And the 12-man mission? 12-man mission was fine. I got kicked a couple of, like, my game crashed a couple times, which is a little bit of a problem, a little bit annoying. Last thing I'll say, last thing I'll say here. K dying, I didn't care. I saw it coming from a mile away. Either Cade or Zavala was going to die, was not going to make it to the end of the, like, make it past this expansion. I especially expected Cade to, because there was no way. There was absolutely no way the voice actor was going to come back for an extended period of time. So I felt absolutely nothing when Cade just, also it kind of made no sense to me personally. Like, I know it probably makes sense lore-wise, but to me it was a little bit convoluted and confusing. Like, they tried, that they knew, like, they... Storyboarded K dying, but didn't quite know how to get there. Just find other instances like that too that I've seen, but like it kind of reminded me of Amanda Holiday. It's like they knew they wanted to kill that character off, but rushed the way to get there. You figured out the way to get there on the fly. So I didn't really care about Kate's death once again. It was slightly more impactful, but I didn't really give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> I know this sounds really, really bad. Um, I do not recommend getting the yearly pass at all. I didn't get it myself. I only got the expansion in episode echoes. I'm still on the fence whether or not I want to quit Destiny 2 in general. If they revert the changes to raids and dungeons, then I think I'll keep going. But if they decide not to revert the search changes and stuff, I'm just done. 
I'm just done. I do not like how every single piece of loot in the game can get enhanced perks. I don't like that at all. It also makes things a little bit more confusing for new players as well. Also, material costs are way too high. Like, holy shit, is the, our things are uber expensive. I'm not a huge fan of the new Mr. Master Rahul system of unlocking new exotics. I don't really care for that necessarily. But it's one of those it is what it is type situations. But. I don't really know where I stand with Destiny currently. I won't ever run Salvation's Edge, nor will I ever make a guide for it. I'll only run it if somebody asks me, like, who really, really wants me to. And then I'll be like, yo, this is be my one-time run only. I'm, I'm not running this raid after this. And I know some people, at least some of my people, peeps that I know might get annoyed with that a little bit. Uh, but honestly, with how much, as y'all know, that I hate running Root of Nightmares, I'd run, I'd rather, I'd find more worth in running Root of Nightmares than Salvation's Edge. Because at least that origin perk is useful. <laughs> but on that note, future for the channel here, um, I'm not covering Destiny 2 anymore. I'm done. The only way I cover Destiny 2 again is if... Uh, Wrath of the Machine comes back. I will definitely cover that raid because that's one that's the one Destiny 1 raid that I really wanted to run the most um, For the cool armor and Weaponry and stuff. I just really want to experience that raid uh, Other than that I probably will not ever do a Destiny 2 video again It was something that I very very sparingly play on the side um, but a couple weeks, we have a Ring DLC, which I will be covering on this channel. In between now and then, I may or may not take a break from content creation just a little bit. If y'all get something, it will be a part one of hard mode for Stellar Blade. Other than that, after Elden Ring DLC is done, after Stellar Blade hard mode is done, um, depending on timings of things, I will probably be able to start Dark Souls 3. I mean, start Dark Souls 3. Um, the only, what I'm, what I'm meaning when I'm saying that is kind of depends on how long the Other Ring DLC is, uh, how long it takes me to get through hard mode. Before October 11th, I will be, in October, I will be covering at least a little bit of Sparking Zero, because I do love Dragon Ball do love the game so I will be covering a little bit of that it will probably be one or two like a one-off or two-off video or something like that also next year we are getting doom dark ages which I will be for sure covering on this channel as you don't know I at least I used to love things that started with D destiny doom dragon ball so Again, we'll be covering those things. Dark Souls 3 will probably be happening sporadically here and there. Also, if a collab happens in the future, it'll probably be a collab between me and a friend of mine doing Elden Ring co-op, and we got him through that. It'll be, it would be his first time. It would be my bunch of times. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how many times I've been in the game. But on that note, let me know what y'all thoughts of the Flash Shape were. I do not think it's good at all as any of the previous expansions, expansions except for it's definitely better than Dark Below. Definitely better than Shadow Keep and Lightfall. But it's worse than everything else. Um, let me know in the comments below. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side.